Hey, this video is going to highlight a couple new changes for 2026 regarding line and curve tables. Let's just start with this uh, made up little property line that I have here and the uh, yellow line, the dash yellow line represents uh, an easement line. Let's just start by annotating this boundary with a, and creating a line table. So if I go to auto annotate turn use line tables to always so everything gets added and then I'm going to click this little button that allows suffixes so I'll show you what results in that after that's selected but I'll hit OK and just simply pick that boundary line and hit enter and it asks for a position for the line table I'll just click right there and there's my line table so I have all the line work in the line table clockwise. So the first new update to this is has to do with the table header itself. As you can see, there is no title in this box. So I can go to the table defaults. And now you do see an option for the title and header right here in the defaults. And there's a space for a line table title. I'm going to add just the word words, line table, and curve table to that. Uh, here's the text size for the, the label. That's this label here. And the table text is this text in here at 0.08. If I go into the title and header defaults, I can, they're also at 0.8. But so let's change the header to be 0.1 and the title to be 0.12 and hit OK. And then another option that has been added is now that I've changed these defaults, I can now apply these new settings to an existing table by clicking Apply Settings to Table. And I just pick that table and hit Enter. You can see that it resized the uh, header and added the title. The other thing is that support of suffixes. So I'm going to demonstrate that by going to annotate line curve table and use the line table function. So if I pick on that, I'm going to first pick a new table. So I'm going to create a new table off to the side here. I click, click new table, leave the prefix the same, and I'll hit OK and pick a spot over here for the new table. Then I pick a line, pick this segment of the line, and it defaults to the next available line number, which is 9. But what I'd actually like to do is call it 1-E for easement. And you can see it labeled it L1, because the prefix is the same, dash E. Do the same for the next say 2-E, 3-E, and 4-E. So that's how I can add a suffix to an existing line number. Now, if I wanted to make further edits to this table, I have always been able to go back to the line curve table and edit table values. I can also edit properties here, but I can edit table values. You can now just simply double click on the table. So I'm going to change this and add a different title at the top of this. So I just simply double click on it and it brings up the values so that I could change these line number values here if I wanted to. But what I'm looking for is to edit properties and I'll go to the general table editor and change this. This might look familiar. But I'm going to change this to easement line table. You can see the values carried over. I hit OK and it's updated that table. So another thing I can do similarly is uh, I talked about changing the values of the table itself. So let's just say I want to change these labels all together instead of L1E. I just want to say E1, E2, E3, etc. So I can again double click on the table and I can change them here. I'll just say 
e dash one. Let's just say e one. E two, E three, and E four. And I hit OK. It says auto size table, yes or no. I'm just going to say no. I'm fine with the table size. And you'll notice that the table values all changed and modified the label values to match. So I've not modified the complete table and the line work along with it. Another upgrade to 2026 is the ability to edit uh, line work that already is attached to a table number. Now, in the past, if uh, I needed to make a major edit to this property line, um, if I was to explode that property line, it would delete all the tables and line and curve numbers that went along with it. So we've made a change to that to allow major edits like this easier. Now, before I do that, keep in mind that if I make minor edits, like if I'm just to modify a polyline, this is a closed polyline, if I just modify a vertice, look at L6 and L7, if I am to remove that and edit that, they do update automatically. So there's no need to delete the table or relabel these. It's more like major edits. So let's just say I'm going to draw a new parcel line that looks something more like this. And this part is going away. And this is my new one. Let's just go ahead and add a curve in there. So if I was to just trim this out, again, I would lose that portion of the tables. So we have a new command to unlink those labels before making those edits. It has to be done before. But if you go to line curve table, at the bottom of the pull down is unlink labels. If I select that, I can pick this line and hit enter. So I now have a polyline that if I make edits, it does not automatically update. There's a new function to the trim command, by the way. Might as well show that while I'm at it. And if you run into that, you hit mode. And it can be quick or standard. If it's quick, it automatically assumes trim entities by what's on the screen. So if it's on quick, I can just go like that. It automatically trims to that. And I don't have to pre-select that. Um, I can use that on there. But if you don't like that, you hit mode and put it back to standard. So now I can erase these things. Now that I'm erasing the labels themselves, watch the table, it updates. So I now have no curves. I still have the remaining line numbers, and I just have to relabel these. So I'm now going to relabel this new boundary line, this new portion of this boundary line, using auto annotate. And I have this set to uh, always use line tables, and for arcs, always use curve tables. I'll hit OK, select this polyline. The program lets me know that L1, the default line number, is already in use. It prompts me to use the next available. So to accept that default, I just hit Enter at the command line. It program then asks for a position for the new curve table to be placed in the drawing. I now have this one remaining line segment here that was trimmed out. And I'm going to label that and add it to the table by going to line curve table, line table function. And I'm going to use points and pick this point to this point and it's line number nine, that's the next available one, and just hit enter. My final new feature to show is copy table and add table. So the copy table idea is if I wanted to, I've got a, an existing line and curve tables here that for everything in this little subdivision, but if I was going to create a sheet that just showed this, if I had a viewport that was only showing this portion of the subdivision, 
Um, I don't want to add this whole line, all these line and curve tables to the entire sheet. I want to be able to just select the ones in this area. So that's what copy table is for. So if I go to annotate line curve table and I hit copy table subset, and I'm going to pick the curve table and pick a position for the table copy. I'm going to pick over here. And then I can select by a window in in, which I'm going to do. But please notice that I have a polyline. So I could draw a polyline around just the area I wanted to and select from that polyline. So if I hit select, I'm just going to window this in. And I can even remove these couple extra ones down here. However, you just normally do window selection. I hit enter and enter again when I'm done selecting. And there's my table portion that only has these uh, curve tables, la uh, labels in it. I'm going to do the same command for the lines. Pick position here, select. This time I'm going to use a WP for window poly just to show that you can use any selection method that you have at your disposal. That's just a CAD selection. And I hit enter and enter again. And there's my two tables that are only referencing this area. Add table is in the case that if I were to accidentally erase all these tables, I've got all my labels left, but no tables. Previously, it had been uh, very difficult to regenerate this new table. You could use a lot manager to do so, but there was never a way to just select and create a new table out of these existing labels. So we've added new intelligent to these labels, and you can create a table out of it. So I can go to annotate, line curve table, and I'm going to use the add table elements. And I can just, I'm just going to window in everything this time and hit enter and select a new table. I pick a point on the screen and a curve table. I'll hit new. You notice I could select an existing one if that were the case, and I'll pick a new curve table over here. And there we have recreated line and curve tables from the labels existing in the drawing.